Hey guys, it's Nate, aka The Foot Account, and welcome back to the channel. Guys, what is EA cooking with this Team 3 and basically what was just released yesterday with Winter Wildcards content, with the icons, the SBCs, the objectives, the evolution that we had? What in the world is EA doing? And the craziness looks like it's going to continue today, once I can log in the game, thank you, with the SBC player that we're getting. Yeah, you might know it's Allison. But he actually might not be a goalkeeper as it was leaked a long time ago, which would also fit in with the craziness that EA is doing right now. So we're going to take a look at that in today's video and cover all of yesterday's content as well as look at the market and why I've spent two thirds of my coins heading into Saturday today. If you're excited for it, drop a thumbs up and subscribe if you're new. We're going to go to objectives to start this one off. Just as we talked about in yesterday's video, uh, we did have the Yeri Mina objective, and uh, it is the exact same card that was leaked. So shout out to the leaks being spot on with this one. Six foot five and a five star weak foot. If you have a Serie A squad, this one might be uh, something to do. And also for a potential Evo in the future, like imagine a five star weak foot Yeri Mina. If you can boost up his passing and dribbling a little bit along with the defense and physical with Jockey Plus, like maybe way down the line but that's a pretty one pretty easy uh, objective to get done and a pretty nice card and also we had the winter daily play completionist once again for some xp a few packs basically the same objective as last week we also have the nike mad ready precision uh, mindset the kit if you bought that before you can now do number one and number two the second one finally unlocked and that was the objective content yesterday on this game now let's go to sbcs this is where it starts to get crazy first of all our player sbc ian wright and they definitely did the business in terms of an upgrade on this card he said in yesterday's video that we wanted it to be something different something crazy right they did something different and crazy they gave him the quick step plus rapid uh, technical chip shot and power shot play styles he has got pace they lowered his shooting they upped his dribbling 99 heading accuracy is a crazy random stat when all of his other attacking stats are just, you know, decent, like for shooting wise, right? 88 stamina, 69 jumping. He can play on the right and left side. Five star skills definitely is going to make this card be pretty cool. But the price is the problem, man. Nine squads and a total of 620,000 coins to get this Ian Wright card done. Um, yeah, it's just... It's just expensive. Big upgrade, big price, I guess you would say. But I don't even know if I'd be that excited about the upgrade. It's just a very different version of Ian Wright. And again, as you may know, with the team of cards that came out in packs, it kind of goes along with the vibe, right? It was just... It's just crazy. So I just don't like where the player species have been going. I think yesterday was a day where a lot of people started to get upset with this promo because of the SBCs that were released, the price they were released at, and the cards that were put out in packs as well. We're going to talk about that a little bit more in today's video, but that Ian Wright was definitely something crazy yesterday, that's for sure. We had the 83-plus Team of the Week player pick that was re-released. And also, I've been forgetting about this personally, but... I hope you have not been the daily tradable winter challenge for a daily tradable mega pack SBC. I know these promo cards are difficult to pack. That's not going to change. But if you get a tradable pack, let's say you hit a walkout. I mean, it could be some easy coins each week, um, you know, once or twice if you hit something decent, especially with the best of still in packs, team two and team three of winter wild cards all in packs right now. Let's go to evolutions and talk about that because... We were excited for Evos, right? And we had that leak that said we were getting not one, but two evolutions yesterday. But that didn't happen. We only had one evolution, and people aren't that happy with it. It's called High Visibility. Help your center mid be more efficient in attack by boosting their vision. And also getting pinged pass, which is very good. And long ball pass play style. So this is a really easy Evo to do, guys. I know that people are a little bit disappointed with it. And I think they're disappointed because it just doesn't hit like an insane evolution. Maybe some of the last Evos that we had, they were insane, right? You know, with Pep's Legacy, Like a Rock, the Growth Spurt. You know, you go on Footbin and, and you look at the, the upvote, downvote percentage on some of these Evos. Pep's Legacy, 92%. Growth Spurt, 93%. Like a Rock, 73%. But then you get to this one for high visibility and it's 13% upvoted. It, in my opinion, guys, this actually is, after looking at it a bit more, this is a solid Evo. It's just solid. It's not, doesn't have the wow factor, right? It's a smaller upgrade, guys. In my opinion, this is an Evo that unless it fits into a, an evolution you're already doing for like a chain, this is one that I would probably hold off on. You got 20 days. There's a lot of time for more evolutions to come out. If you're evoing a player, this could be really, really good for a evo that's going to have multiple 
parts to it like the one that i just did with Bergoni, i showed you guys in yesterday's video like that is a chain evo as you would call it right this one could be really really good to fit into that as well um because yeah there are some decent cards that fit into it straight away from being a gold item like declan rice and lamer probably some of the better ones but I think this is one that if you're evoing somebody from a lower level to a higher level, those play styles could be very, very useful. Also, the plus four curve, plus four long passing, plus seven vision could be very useful on a silver card, maybe that you're evolving from a lower tier to a higher tier. So even though this Robert Tone card doesn't even look that bad, you know, you get plus three physical, no defensive upgrades, but plus three dribbling and then plus five passing. That's the big upgrade. You also get plus two pace and plus three shooting. So for an attacking midfielder or a center mid, this could be a pretty solid evolution, especially if you put it as a part of a chain. So I'm going to hold off on that one. Got a lot of time to get it done and it is free and it requires only like three games so i like that part of it but that's an evo probably you want to save now i want to show you team three and i would show you right here where they show all the other teams right they show winter wild cards team two team of the week and the winter best of but ea i think had to take the graphics down there's no loading screen they deleted their tweets and their instagram posts yesterday all because i think of this yesterday when they dropped john joe shelby uh, his winter wild cards player item they released it as a premier league card with a turkish league the, the club that he actually plays for the turkish club that he actually plays for was on the card but it also said premier league right here and he actually got premier league links this card was like fifty thousand coins because he was a 99 paced premier league left back pretty crazy right but ea quickly said that that was a mistake and those who obtained the winter wild cards john joe shelby player item on the transfer market before the league update will be sent back there on ultimate team coins and contacted in game in the coming days. So for like this guy right here, Rage Effect on Twitter, he bought a bunch of Shelby's that he was trading with right in that first couple of minutes after content. So he's probably going to get his coins back for all the coins that he spent on those cards. He's going to get that in return on top of the cards he was able to sell too, right? So that's kind of a crazy situation. That's actually going to probably inject some coins to the market. Not a ton, but it will a little bit when that actually gets paid out. But I think for that reason, since EA had him as a Premier League player on their graphics, they had to take down all their graphics on social media and inside of the game. So if you're looking for a loading screen, it's probably why it's not there as of right now. But this team in general, guys was a big surprise like what a wild change from winter wild cards team one which yeah we had a couple position changes inside of it like you know the vvd second position was a striker or you had the orente at left wing there was some decent or like my minor right made more of the minor position changes except for the icons this whole entire team is almost position changes it feels a lot like shapeshifters and not as much like winter wild cards okay yes we do have a striker salah which is uh, this this card to me makes no sense why does he still have a, a three-star weak foot he should have a four-star weak foot especially given the striker position change it's a simple plus two shooting they didn't upgrade the pace over his inform uh his passing is better on the inform and they gave him a plus six physical boost like it's a decent upgrade over the player of the month i guess but if you did the player of the month Nah, this is not worth buying for 1.9 mil. Just keep your player of the month. So that card's confusing to me. Raul got a nice upgrade, right? He actually looks almost the same as his other card does. Just a simple, like, plus two over his card. Garincha, same thing. And then it gets weird, especially with the icons, right? Alan Shearer, center attacking mid with long ball pass. But here's the thing with all these cards that doesn't make sense to me. If you're going to make Alan Shearer a cam and give him a long ball pass, right? Why does he have only 71 long passing? That doesn't make sense. Long ball pass play style, but 71 long passing. I'm really interested to see how that kind of works out in game. If he has a really low actual stat in game, but then he has the play style plus. Let's look at Loudrup too. A lot of people like this Loudrup card, and I think it's kind of cool. Right back Loudrup for the fact that it's a pretty meta looking right back with the whipped pass plus, which we all know is very meta. He's four star, four star, but then you look at the card, you see 51 aggression. I mean, 79 defensive awareness is a little bit low. There's another card in here that's got really low defensive awareness. Is it, uh, is it closer? It might be closer. Let me take a look at his in-game stats. 65 defensive awareness with 99 heading, 99 interceptions, 95 slide tackle, 96 standing tackle. So he can tackle, intercept, and uh, do all that real well, but he just he's not aware of where the ball is. Like This looks like a great card, but when you dive into the stats, you see some things like that and 67 aggression that just don't make sense. It's like EA, when they did these position changes, they juiced up some of these cards to make them look crazy with the position changes. 
but they also didn't want to fully make them super OP, so they didn't upgrade a few stats in a couple areas. Center back Yashin is one of the craziest cards I've ever seen, just because it's mind-boggling, right? He has the hat in game. Yes, he's 2 million coins. He's very expensive. He's got the block play style plus. 62 dribbling, but 99 reactions, 98 composure. Like, what? That That's crazy. Like, some of these stats, again, I'm telling you guys. And then as we get into the main team of the promo cards, Courtois is one of the most hyped cards in this team. He's up like 20,000 coins right now. By the way, guys, these were really good to flip yesterday. I bought one of these Courtois yesterday at, um, I don't even remember what I paid. I think I bought Courtois for like 310 or no, 318 and sold him for like 350. He had a pretty solid bounce. He's bouncing once more now. He's 304 up to 327. I would sell this card before we get too far into the day today. Yes, these cards have the crazy cool factor because it's a striker Courtois. I don't think the price is going to hold up that long uh, as the Winter Wild cards last week dropped a lot on Saturday as well. But take a look at this Courtois, right? Aerial Plus with... Eight, with 90 shooting and 91 physicality. But you look inside the stats here. Yes, his shot power, 99. Penalties, 99. Dribbling, 99 agility, 99 balance, 99 reactions, 99 composure, 81 on the actual dribbling stat, which is going to hurt his dribbling in game a lot. But remember, this guy has what? Aerial play style, and he's six foot six. So you're like, okay, I'm going to be crossing the ball to Courtois. Aerial play style plus and power header and acrobatic play style as well. But then you look. 49 heading accuracy, 49 heading accuracy on a card that you are definitely going to be using for headers as a striker being six foot six with the aerial plus. I'm so curious to know, do his headers actually suck in game because he can't aim or is he so tall with the aerial plus that he can still just get up and the aim like still works because he has a play styles. Again, that's the confusing thing with these cards. It's like they have the play style, the position changes, and all those boosts. But then you look at the card, and it's like, wait a second. Some of these stats just don't add up. I tried Casimir yesterday. He was actually pretty decent. I mean, his shot, his shooting with 99 shot power was pretty crazy. His dribbling it didn't even feel that bad. With 99 composure, reactions, 95 ball control, it was kind of a weird feeling card. Definitely a bit of a truck, but for 190,000 coins, a fun one to try. Um, and then the rest of this team, the rest of this team is just, it's all over the place, man. With the position changes, some of the cards look good. Like, Renato Sanchez looks decent. He's very overpriced. He's definitely going to drop. Lamptey, I would not buy this card right now, guys. He is minimum price. This is a insane budget right back. Yes, I know he lacks in the physicality, but he's five-star weak foot. He can play on the left and the right. He's got long throw plus, which that's cool, right? But Tiki Taka, block, slide tackle, rapid, quick step. Lamptey's card earned in the game was cracked. This card's going to be really good as well. 99 aggression on the card. Uh, this is going to be one that when he gets a price range update and goes down to like 20K, if he goes that low, he's going to end up being a really good investment, I think. I mean, I don't feel like 27K is super, super low for him. Like, I just think that he needs a price range update. If he's 27,000 coins minimum price day one, he needs to be lowered in price. Uh, Raspadori is a solid card for 12,000 coins. Uh, Claude Maurice needs a price range decrease as well. Kunde's card doesn't make sense is a CDM. It's way different and almost just not good compared to the Trailblazer. It's less than the Trailblazer in terms of coins. Uh, this Alvaro goalkeeper card is discard, but he's six foot eight and he's got three play styles. He's going to be fun to try out in game. You'll probably pack him this week as he's discard. Adiyemi got a pretty, I don't know, Adiyemi actually is a normal card and he's got striker position change as well, plus six shooting, passing, dribbling. Again, this team is all over the place, man. I, but I think that's a long time to talk about the team just to say, I think people are just like, I don't know, yesterday felt like just a very midday and the team itself, while, they're all, while there are some really good cards, it's just confusing. It's like, why did this promo just take a turn from being a solid promo with good evolutions and cards that are in packs that make sense to it now it being, okay, this is just a crazy card promo. We're going to drop the most ridiculous cards in the game like Courtois Striker and again, make it feel like a shapeshifters mode. Is this EA testing to see how this is going to go over? Or is it just EA knowing that this stuff goes over really well? Think about it, guys. Position changes like shapeshifters has happened the last couple years in this game. If EA is continuing to do this stuff, then they know that it works and they know that people like it. And even for some of us who are not big fans of it, it's kind of just one of those where it's like, all right, we're going to have to look at this and say, okay, these are very interesting cards. Yes, they're a bit weird and some of the stats don't make sense. But if EA is doing this, 
then there must be something to it. And, you know, we're just going to kind of have to like, I guess, live with it and, and, and find some enjoyment and just the craziness of this. But it definitely does take away a little bit. I hear some of you guys in the, in the Twitch comments yesterday, some of the YouTube comments as well saying that this feels like fake. They weren't ready for this. It's too early. I hear you 100% hear you. But uh, that's why I've went out and bought other cards on the market because for people that are upset and just don't like how these cards look, a lot of the other cards in the market are what they're going to turn to, right? Especially that lower tier that we've been talking about. I picked up some cards. We'll talk about the market here in a little bit. But last thing to mention with this team is um, I would stay away from buying them, at least into today. There might be some fluctuations, but you've already seen them go up. Like Courtois from 304 to 323. I don't think these cards are going to do too well today in terms of prices. Maybe a couple of fluctuations because they are pretty rare. But I, be I bet that a lot of these are going to fall off in value as we head into the content drop today so yes it is some fun cards to try but let me run in the comments which card for you looks at least interesting i like the fun aspect but also i hear you where it's like nah man this is just crazy it's it's not realistic and i feel you but it might even get a little bit more unrealistic today and that's what i want to talk about with this video is what in the world is ea cooking this seems to be the trend all right for winter wild cards team three at least right now because we know the SBC that's coming today, right? This is one that's been looked forward to for a hot minute. It is Allison Becker coming today, Saturday, December 30th, as our Winter Wild Cards SBC. But here's the thing. Everybody would get really excited if he was actually a goalkeeper, right? If we had a goalkeeper SBC, which we haven't had for a while, he could be a really good card. Imagine like a 91 rated Allison with upgraded stats. That'd be a card a lot of people with Premier League teams Liverpool links, Brazilian links would like to put in their team. But remember at the very beginning of Winter Wild Cards, when we heard that some of these position changes were going to be taking place, there was a leak from Foot Sheriff that said that some Winter Wild Card players will get a new position. It was leaked way back then that Van Nistelrooy was going to be a goalkeeper. That is what he came as. It was also leaked that Yashin was going to be in the midfield. He actually came as a center back, but it was leaked also that Allison was going to come in the midfield as well. So what is this card going to look like today? Well, based off of how all the cards looked yesterday, there's a really high chance that they might be taking another goalkeeper and moving him out of goal, either into the midfield, into maybe a center back. We, we got a goalkeeper that moved to center back. We got a goalkeeper that moved to striker. So maybe they are going to move him into the midfield today. Maybe a center attacking mid Allison. Maybe a center mid Allison. Who knows? But uh, that is a, that's a big SBC. That again, the, the the links, the Brazilian links, the Premier League links. There's gonna be a lot of hype around that today. So if they're gonna change it up and make him a midfielder, then they gotta do something saucy with it, I think, and they gotta make it fun and usable. Um, and they also gotta make it like, I mean, not too meta, but they they gotta boost it and make him cool. Again, he's got goalkeeper play styles, and you know, I wonder if does the Yashin, this is something that I just wonder, right? With the Yashin and with like the Courtois, what happens if you put this Courtois in goal? If this Courtois goes in net, does he actually save things? Like he doesn't have any goalkeeper play styles, but is he actually good? Like remember last year, you could take Kyle Walker goalkeeper card from Shapeshifters and put him at right back and he actually played halfway decent because that's what he's like used to playing. So I'm kind of at least curious about that for Allison today, but uh, yeah, this SBC for me today is going to be one that I'm super curious about because I just want to see what EA do with it. I wouldn't mind if they kept him as a goalkeeper because I would think about doing that SBC for sure as a lot of Prem cards are in my team. But if he's going to be a center mid, then it's going to draw some comparisons to like Von Jim and Linkovich Savage. I mean, Allison is six foot four. He is not six foot eight like Vanja is. Um, but he's got a three-star weak foot and he is mostly lengthy. So we'll just see what EA has to do with this Allison SBC today. I'm very curious. If the SBC is good, you could definitely see maybe some Prem center backs move a little bit in value. Um, you could see some of those Brazilian links move up as well, but it's gotta be a really, really good SBC that people want to use. It's well received, right? So that's the big SBC today that we really just don't know about. But if I had to guess, I think he could be a midfielder based off of how they did things yesterday. And also with evolutions, Hey, guys, evolutions are frustrating me a little bit right now just because of the leaks, right? We keep getting leak and then leak and then leak and then, oh, this one's going to be today. This one's going to be today. We still have three leaked Evos right now. We didn't get two yesterday. This guy, Foot Police, said that we were going to get two of them yesterday, which is kind of crazy to think about anyway because we've only ever had, I think, one evolution in the same day. I don't think they've dropped two except for two of the same one, if that makes sense. 
Uh, and that's what he kind of went back and said. He said they will release one Evo per day. So until January 1st, we should have one of these Evos every single day, which is kind of how it went last week on the beginning of the Winter Wild Cards promo for week one, right? We had an Evo Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and Monday. And maybe that's how it's going to drop this time as well. So yesterday, of course, we had the new Evo for high visibility. These are the three Evos that are still leaked right now. The same ones we've been talking about. A center back Evo, a striker Evo, and a new one that is Crossing Crusader Evolution. And uh, the reason why this is a little bit annoying too is if you're trying to prepare for one of these evolutions, which obviously I don't do a lot of, I don't recommend doing a lot of, but take a look at Jude Bellingham yesterday. He was all the way up at 16,000 coins because people thought we were getting the center mid Evo, right? He went all the way down to 7.8k. Look at that drop off. Selling in the hype is definitely what you need to do here. Oh, Penda was another one for the striker evolution who fits that a lot of people were excited about getting into an Evo. I think it was the informal Penda and maybe even the gold one as well. The gold one was up at 3,000 coins. Went down to 1,400. Now he's back up to 2,500. It's the same thing, man. You can trade with these fluctuations because the cards just go up and down and up and down for all these Evos and the leaks. It's crazy. Even, we even have another one. We have another one, guys. If you looked at the popular page on Footbin, you may have noticed that uh, Diaby. Yes, Diaby. Well, he's not there anymore, but that's because Diaby just flew up in price about an hour ago. All of a sudden, he goes to the top of Footbin. He's 5,000 coins. After yesterday, he was, what, 2,000 coins? Yeah, just a regular, regular 84 almost. 2,900, all the way up to 5.3K. So I'm guessing that he is a card that somehow fits into the Crossing Crusader Evolution. And that is, I think, the one that's going to give Whipped Pass Plus. I'm not entirely sure. It's hard to keep these straight. Uh, but there must be some Evo that Diaby fits into uh, because he is up like crazy on the market. So the, the biggest piece of advice I would give you guys is sell into the hype when there's an Evo card or something in your club that's going absolutely kaboom and going crazy because most times they don't go extinct. Only the last couple of evolutions that we have had have been kind of rare situations where these guys do go extinct like Kyle Walker and like Cancelo Inform and Alba Inform. Because also guys, I want to talk about this for a second too. I don't think that the evolutions, and this is one of the reasons why I think we were a bit disappointed with yesterday's Evo is because yeah, it's an okay Evo, but it's, does, it doesn't meet the quality of these other evos that have been released and i don't think that all of the evolutions that get dropped in the next couple of days are going to be of that same quality honestly those evolutions that we had were insane and i don't think they're all going to be that good this week maybe one of them will actually cause some crashing on the market remember last week all the evos made prices get destroyed like we were looking at left backs one day they got destroyed then it was uh like strikers and midfielders getting absolutely dusted because of the new evos as well like guys i i don't think that it's going to be every single Evo that drops in the next couple of days. I don't think it's going to crash prices like it did last week every day. So I think that that means good things for the market. And that's why I went out and started to pick up some cards because if prices have started to move, I think they can continue to move in a lot of different areas. And yes, the Evos could crash the market, but I think we'll worry about that when the Evos drop, which is that content today. Now for some quick flips and for some market talk, let's look at some prices that happened yesterday. A lot of the winter wild cards from team one that went out of packs, they did start to go up. Rafinha's 400K. These cards have been rising since Thursday, right? Militao is up. Grimaldo's rising. Some of the icons are rising as well. Enzo and Balde starting to rise as well. 75K for Balde. He was just almost 80K. Even the discarded ones like Cherokee's up 1,000 coins from being discarded. Enzo Fernandez is up too. If you look at his graph, like this is a card that is just doing good. He was 76K yesterday, and now he's 90,000 coins just continuing to go up because these cards... People want to try the newest things in this game, the newest cards, and uh, they're out of packs now. And these cards just kind of keep going up. And that's how it worked for a lot of the rest of the market yesterday, too. A lot of the team, the group stages are up. Sokka is 700K. Um, Bellingham is up. Griezmann is up to a higher price than normal. I did flip some of these cards. These cards are really good to trade with. Wow, Leao is 6 79 that's up klaus yesterday was one of my main trades i picked up klaus at uh, 214,000 coins he ended up going all the way to like 260 i was able to get one out there it was a bit of a uh, rarity spike you could say but this card is one that goes from like 215 to 240 multiple times per day so i'm gonna keep an eye on this card because obviously he's very rare he's 218 right now if i get one or two undercuts from that I'm happy with it, but with everybody being a little disappointed with this promo, like we said, look at the other out-of-packs cards. It is an amazing time 
to be flipping cards on the market in this game. Yesterday, Reese James went from 380. Right now, he's 420, so a 40K um, fluctuation there. It's about 20K per card if you time it right. Timber was one that fluctuated a lot from the Dynasties team. The radioactive cards, even the ones that were in packs, uh, were moving, like Valverde. Kaviche looking a bit low right now on his card. Sobosly is up, almost 10,000 coins. Zinchenko is rising back to 100K. Um, the UEFA heroes are still amazing to trade with, guys. These are still so, so, so good to trade with. Bomb Pastor has so much hype. This is a card that is up that I could just see continuing to rise. Like, what was her price yesterday? Between She was 166 at content, then went back to 176, and now she's approaching 180. Like, the meta cards that people want to use in their teams, they're just going to keep rising, guys. I really think so. Unless there's something crazy that comes out to drop them or a crazy SBC to make them dip a little bit. Right now, stuff is just looking like the meta cards that people want to buy and put in teams are just going to keep going up. Now, if they're up like crazy, crazy amounts, then maybe you'd be a bit careful with that. Uh, but like Joe Gomez is back down, 98,000 coins, right? Um, you know, Ledley King is one that keeps popping in my mind. A low budget center back from the Premier League, 60K. That's actually a good price. I would buy that because he was 66K multiple times yesterday. 69K before content, 66K after. If I can pick up at Ledley King, once again, at 60,000 coins, I'm in. That's the sort of stuff that I'd be doing on this market right now is the lower budget. Again, I know we keep saying that. 60K of the shadow. Sign me up. That's hopefully 67K later today, right? That's just the type of stuff that I'm doing. The rare cards, the stuff that you look at the flipping graphs and it's doing this. That's the stuff you want to be involved in. And I would also stress this. Get on the bids, man. Get on the bids for a lot of these cards. And also for fodder. Let's talk about fodder really quickly to end this thing off because fodder was all over the place yesterday. Informs went down a little bit. I think they maybe went up just a slight bit after content. Uh, but as expected, the 84 times 10s dropped for the gold fodder, that is. And fodder was really, really good to get on bids. Now it's back up a little bit because the 87s were like 10,500 coins. So I think yesterday was a really good time to get on fodder on bids, just like last week was. And maybe throughout the rest of this week, you should see fodder go up a little bit. I wouldn't say it's a guarantee, but I would say that it seems decently likely for the amount of SBCs that are on this game. SBCs are going to continue to be dropped in this game. And there's there's consistent demand, and that's good things. That means good things for these cards. Now, the 84 times 10s could continue to be dropped in the store, but it looks like EA is slowing down a little bit on the lightning rounds because last week they had the 84 times 10 all night, Friday night into Saturday, and they are not there right now. Now, like we mentioned yesterday, there's going to be more store packs today for sure. They're going to drop the 84 times 10 and more upgrade packs 100%. But I think, it, you know, if we don't get any good SBCs today, if Allison's not a great SBC, then maybe you have one last chance to get in on some fodder because it's probably not going to drop too much between where we are right now and then when we get to maybe Sunday with another Icon SBC player pick pack or a hero player pick pack sort of situation. Uh, I think we're nearing, we're near the lowest point for this stuff. Maybe today rather than where we will be this end of this next week with more SBCs, a lot of SBCs still out and people having coins in this game. So uh, that's the place where I'll be watching cards right now again in this game. And if an Evo does impact prices, um, let me take a look at Mazrawi, who is a card that we looked at last week when all of the right backs and left backs were hurting from evolutions, Mazra, we went from what, 200 and what was he like? 230,000 coins. He went all the way down to 160. He's slowly rising back up. Last night he was having a rarity spike. It was 200,000 coins. He's 190. Now you're starting to see some of this stuff rebound pretty well. Cancelo team of the group stage was another one, right? He went down to, I think like 260. And now he's over 300,000 coins or right at 300K. So these cards that are meta, that are big name popular, they continue to rise. The market's very healthy right now. It's very, very good to trade in. Just got to look in the right places and be careful with the timing. And yeah, I guess watch out for the Evos and see what they drop for that. Other than that, I don't think there's going to be too much today going on on a Saturday. Um, I don't think any of the objectives are like going crazy today at all. I know we're still watching the... Uh, the Winter Wildcards Weekly Trader. I think this is set to expire tomorrow, but I'm not entirely sure. Last week on Saturday as well, we had a pretty good Luis Hernandez SBC that was still central to his position with being a striker, but it was good value, and that gives me at least a little bit of hope for today. Just a little bit of hope, guys. Maybe EA do something decent today with Allison. 
That's my hope. But if you enjoyed today's video, drop a thumbs up on it. Comment down below what your thoughts are on this winter wild cards. I know some negative stuff, some positive stuff. A lot of people are feeling a lot of different things with this, but let me know what you think down below in the comments. And of course, subscribe to the channel if you're new. I'll see you guys in a video tomorrow at the very least. It's been Nate for the count. See you guys there. Peace out.